This bandsaw can make right angled and left angled cuts depending on your project needs, but it's a very simple machine to operate. We'll just get into it and you'll need to pay attention a little bit so that you can pass the safety test required before you can use this machine. Let's go over the controls. Um, on our control panel here, we've only got a handful of buttons. We've got our main power switch. This is what gives the whole machine power so you can turn the motor on. So we'll turn it back on. We've got our go, stop, our blade speed, and this control, this changes it from the button control to we've got a hand control up here. Should never have to change that. So every time you do start this bandsaw, in order to stop it, you've got to hit the red button. But that also means, because this is an emergency stop button, every time you stop it, by hitting this button, you've got to reset it. Otherwise, it's not going to start again for you. Once the blade is moving, then you can adjust this RPM speed here. And generally for everything we're cutting, we're cutting mild steel, nothing real hard, some aluminum. Your blade speed is going to be around 190 to, I guess, 250, somewhere in there. Now we have our hydraulics. This is what actually lowers the cutting arm. Um, it's got a hydraulic lever here and you can adjust the rate at which it drops. Now, every time you go to make a cut on this, and I'm loosening this thimble here, Lefty Lucy on this thimble speeds up the cutting and righty tighty slows it down. Now I've got it written on top of this control panel, number four cutting speed. That means we'll dial this guy into number four on this. You'll see a little white tick mark there. And then you should never have to touch that. We're gonna just start and stop the feed by this lever. Now you don't have to force it. I'll come up to this and kids have close this so hard because they feel like they've got to and it it's almost so to the point it's going to break this off so it's just open close that means start stop now sometimes you'll have to adjust this speed when let's say you're cutting aluminum you can cut at a faster speed or if like when you've seen me lower this arm instead of waiting for this thing to slowly travel, you can open up this thimble and let it drop much quicker. One thing to prevent having to do that every time is when you are loading your material for your next cut, you should only have to lift this blade just above whatever material you're cutting. That way you don't have to adjust this every single time. All right. Now, our jaw here for this bandsaw is seven inches long. And just as a good general rule of thumb, you never want to try to clamp anything in this jaw that is less than seven inches. All right? Because we can only have about half of that in the vise and still have enough jaw pressure to hold the material in there while we're cutting, which would be about three and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut on this. I'm going to, let's say I had a mark on it. When I slide this in, and I'm not sure you're able to see this on the video, but I'll just do my best explaining it. When you are trying to line up your cuts, you're gonna look down the blade and line it up on your mark. And we, want our blade to go straight through the mark or you want this mark to be on the right side of the blade that way if anything we've got more material versus being undersized and we can take a little bit away you can't add material as easy as you can just grind a smidge away now once you've got it lined up on the blade we'll come over here to the vise and this handle here, this is just to get you in snug. This right here we'll call the tension bar. This is how you actually tighten the vise, okay? 
a lot of kids will come in and really wrench on this wheel and it ruins a lot of internal springs and whatnot when you do that this guy is just to get you snug and our tension bar that's what we use to actually put that last little bite on our tubing now you can tell i'm not pushing down on this a great deal i'm just pushing and that tension is more than enough i've had kids who i've seen like jump on this and push this thing down and the problem with that is when you over tighten on this work we're cutting and using pretty thin walled tubing and when you over tighten on the vise it will deform your tubing and then your tubing is no longer round it's oval and that's not what we want for our projects so i've got that thing tightened and i've got it lined up on my mark before we actually start this arm traveling down to make the cut we have to get the blade moving we never want that blade resting on the material when we hit the start button that can cause a lot of force right here at that that point and it can snap the blade so we always start the blade before we have it touch or cut anything that we are cutting so start and we're just gonna open this valve all right if you let this bandsaw go through and do its thing and stop on its own it's got a button here that will turn the blade off for you that way you don't have to hit the emergency stop button that's there in case something's going wrong you can hit it and it'll shut everything down now once your pieces are cut you need to be very aware of these edges there's some burrs on there and these are razor sharp and they'll cut you really good and you can see even on the inside of this material it's really sharp for whatever reason kids will start putting these on their fingers and it's like a chinese finger trap on steroids and it will cut and gouge your fingers really bad so don't go putting your fingers in here just be aware of this uh, you can take this to the sander and get the burrs off when you're going to fit it to your project now when we're cutting small pieces even maybe small a smaller portion like this off of a longer piece that needs to be held with some pliers okay the the reason is let's say we were cutting something smaller than this opening here between the blade and this fence that piece can be pulled into the blade right here and jam and that could end up breaking or popping the blade off of its guide all right this bandsaw does have a repeatable bar that we can put in here and tighten down this is so that you can make uh, multiple repeat cuts let's say you had 30 pieces that needed to be all at 10 inches you can set this thing up and just slide your material in until it hits the stop and make the same cut that way you don't have to measure every single time you do need to measure every single cut every single time unless you're doing the repeatable cut what i mean by that is if you do have let's say three cuts and you put a mark at every five inches the problem is that this material its kerf or the material being cut away is as thick as this blade so if you cut through every time you're losing this much even though it's not a, a lot you're losing that material so we always measure cut measure cut unless we're doing that repeatable stop then you're fine now to adjust the angle on this we have this pin that needs to be pulled and we can look down here at the angle of whatever we're going to make our cut at and this is our lock lever Okay, we need to open that and then we can adjust this head so that we can make whatever angled cut we need to. And you'll follow over here. If we're making a 45 degree angle cut, we'll just bring this guy over. I hope you can see that in the video. All right now, before you make any cut after you've adjusted the head of this, you've got to remember to 
close this lock lever. If you don't, while it's cutting, it can be pulled into a different angle, which could bend or break the blade. Then when you're done with whatever angle, always take it back to zero. Come in and double check, make sure it's actually set to zero. And if you do come up to this bandsaw, never really assume that it's set on zero. Um, I've had some kids go through and make a bunch of cuts that had to be a perfect 90 degree cut and someone had it on like five degrees and they weren't paying attention. So always come and double check. You'll notice we've got some hoses here. These are for our coolant. Uh, the last cut I had, I didn't have the coolant on just for the video's sake and I've got some coming for us but a little bit goes a long way on this machine. We don't have to have these hoses drenching and spraying water out everywhere or our coolant everywhere. A little bit goes a long way, just enough to keep this blade wet and see some drizzle off the top of our material. Then when we're done with our cut, we'll come over, lift up on this tension bar and loosen it. If you do have a full long bar of material that you're cutting here, make sure you do have our rest set up and that material is level. Otherwise, when you go to make your cuts and if it's angled up just slightly because that stand is lower, then none of your cuts are going to be perfectly straight. They're going to have an angle on it. So make sure that this is nice and level. We've got levels here in the shop. You can stick it on your material and we can adjust that, that stand.